Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Animalia part 30 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's look at a few questions now. How useful is the study of the nature of body cavity and coelom in the classification of animals? So we have discussed about a couple of parameters which are the basis for classification of uh, the kingdom animalia. So coelom was one of the important parameters. So how did it help us? So before that, let us quickly review what is coelom. It is the cavity between the body wall and the digestive tract or you can say the cavity between body wall and gut wall. Now it was seen that there are certain animals which do not have a coelom. There are certain which have a true coelom while there are few who do not have a true coelom but they have a coelom like structure which we can call as a false coelom. So depending upon that animals were classified as coelomates where true coelom was present and the body cavity was lined by mesoderm. Examples were animals, mollusks, arthropods, echinoderms, hemichordates and chordates. There was another category called pseudocelomids where a false coelom was present. So their mesoderm is present as scattered pouches in between the ectoderm and endoderm. Example nematodes and the last category was acelomids where there was no coelom present. So examples are platyhelminths, cylindrates and polyphers. So if you look at the diagram it is somewhat like this. In case of coelomids you have this is your ectoderm this grey coloured structure is your endoderm. So this is your endoderm. So here you have a cavity, right? So this cavity is coelom. So this cavity is lined by the mesoderm. But in case of pseudocelomates, if you see, mesoderm is scattered in the form of pouches in between ectoderm and endoderm. And in acelomates, there is no coelom at all. You have just have ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm, one after the other. So there is no cavity present. Let us look at the next one. Distinguish between intracellular and extracellular digestion. Now, whenever we use the word extra, that means something which is outside. When we say intra, that is something within inside. So intracellular would definitely mean within cells, and extracellular would be outside cells. So digestion which occurs inside cells is intracellular, outside cells is extracellular. Now for digestion what you need, you need some enzymes which can actually break down the complex food particles into simpler ones. So in case of intracellular digestion, when it is taking place inside the cell, there has to be some enzymes secreted within the cell. So who secretes those enzymes? Lysosomes. So lysosomal enzymes are secreted whereas when it happens outside the cell then the salivary en enzymes, pancreatic enzyme, intestinal enzymes all these are secreted. Now in intracellular the products are diffused into the cytoplasm because inside the cell what you have the base of the cell is all made up of cytoplasm. So whatever products are formed the simpler substances which are formed as a result of digestion they are uh, secreted or they are diffused into the cytoplasm. In case of extracellular, they are diffused to different parts of the body because in case like for example in human body, when digestion takes place, what happens? The absorbed nutrients is sent to different parts of the body. Intracellular is generally seen in unicellular and simpler organisms, but extracellular is seen in multicellular organisms like human beings. So these are some of the distinctions between um, extracellular and intracellular digestion. Third one, what is the difference between direct and indirect development? So I have spoken about this before also. Whenever we say direct development, that means the embryo directly develops into a mature individual. Now when I say mature individual, that doesn't mean that uh, uh, when a child is born, in case of human beings, when a child is born, he will be born as a mature human being, maybe an adult of 20 years old. It is not like that. What I'm trying to say is like when the baby is born, the baby is a human being. So you understand there is no intermediate stage. There is no other organism which is formed first and then that organism will uh, I mean, gradually grow into a human being. It is not like that. 
so that is an example of direct development indirect development embryo first develops into an immature stage then develops into a mature individual for example in some of the amphibians you see that they first get grow into a larval stage then that larva exists for certain amount certain period of time and then it gradually develops into a mature individual so no larval stage is involved in direct development but a larval stage is involved in indirect development examples of direct development are fishes reptiles birds mammals indirect developments are invertebrates and amphibians what are the peculiar features that you find in parasitic platyhelminths now here we have to tell only about the features which are specific to parasitic platyhelminths otherwise platyhelminths features we all know now body is flat and dorsi ventrally hence they are flat worms that is something which is common to all the platyhelminths talking about the parasitic platyhelminths they feed on they stay inside the body of host and ob obtain nutrients from them so they bear hooks and suckers so that they can get their food which helps them in getting their food sensory organs are not very well developed excretory organs like flame cells are present as i said you have an excretory canal here and inside that flame cells are present the digestive tract is absent or incomplete so you do not have a proper digestive system what are the reasons that you th that you can think of for the arthropods to constitute the largest group of the animal kingdom you remember i told you that arthropoda is the i mean has the maximum population in the animal kingdom but can you find can you think of a reason why why do they have so much of population so the, if the population is so huge that means their death rate is less i mean not many of them die very easily so that is that can be one of the reason why they are surviving so good so one reason is presence of the tough exoskeleton so they have an exoskeleton which is very hard and tough which is made up of chitin so because of that it ensures protection to their body so they do not get injured or they do not die very easily because of the presence of that protective exoskeleton so it also helps them to survive in extreme conditions so that is again another very big advantage so because of this their uh, rate of living increases also appendages of abdomen associated with locomotion reproduction and defense so these joint appendages help in a multi multiple purposes so because of all these reasons we feel that there is a possibility that arthropods are increasing in number water vascular system is a characteristic feature of which group of the following porifera tenophora echinodermata or chordata so where did we see water vascular system we saw it in echinodermata and it helps in locomotion food capture and respiration do you remember how was the water vascular system you have a central ring here and then you have the radial canals going like this and somewhere here you have the tube feet right so the water vascular system present in echinodermata all vertebrates are chordates but all chordates are not vertebrates justify the statement i have explained this before also as i said chord it means all those who have a notochord notochord and few other uniqueness that has to be present then that organism can be called as chord it vertebrate is one category of chord it other than vertebrates also we have different types of chord it like eurochordata cephalochordata they are also chord it but they are not vertebrates now if we talk about the unique features which define a chordate it is the presence of notochord if you talk about vertebrates notochord is present therefore we say that vertebrates are chordates but vertebral column is present in the adults which is not present in right so this is something which is unique unique in uh, the vertebrates so chordates do not have a vertebral column right so all chordates will not have a vertebral column if you take example of eurochordata or cephalochordata they will not have a vertebral column so vertebrates are a type of chordates so that is why all vertebrates are chordates but all chordates are not vertebrates 
For example, I'll, I'll give you a very simple example. You have many energy drinks these days, right? For example, you have Horlicks, Bond Vita, Boost, so many others. Now, if I say that Boost is an energy drink, but all energy drinks are not Boosts. All Boosts are energy drinks, but all energy drinks are not Boosts. Why? Because Boost is just one type of energy drink. Even other than Boost, you have so many others, like Complan, Horlicks, this, that and all. So similarly here also vertebrates is a type of chordates, but not all chordates are vertebrates. So in vertebrates you have many other special features like ventral muscular heart with two, three or four chambers, kidneys for excretion, paired appendages which may be fins or limbs. So these are again some additional features which we see in vertebrates. So vertebrates share the basic features of chordates, therefore all vertebrates are chordates, but the vice versa is not true. Let us look at the next one. Could the number of eggs or young ones produced by an oviparous and viviparous mother be equal? So what do I mean by oviparous? Oviparous means uh, an organism which lay eggs. VV parents an organism which give birth to young ones. Now it is telling, is it possible that the number of eggs given by an oviparous mother is equal to the number of young ones produced by the viviparous mother? Well, the answer is no. They can never be equal. That's because an oviparous mother give produce eggs and viviparous mothers produce young ones. Now these eggs actually develop into that young one externally. So there are a lot of chances that the eggs might get spoiled or some harm can happen to it. So that possibility of spoiling of that egg is more. But for viviparous mother, the development of the young one from the embryo takes place inside the mother's body. So the chances of external risks are less. So maybe if a viviparous mother gives birth to one child, so we, we are sure, I mean, we are 90% sure that the child will be born good and healthy. But in case of oviparous mother, even though it, it lays, it, it, if it lays only one egg, we will not be sure whether that egg will actually be able to convert into a young one. Maybe it will get spoiled before. So if she gives some 10 eggs, then there is a possibility that okay, at least 3 to 4 of it will give rise to a young one. So because of that, these numbers can never be equal. Oviparous mothers, the number of eggs produced are prone to environmental changes. Therefore, more chances of death before they mature into an individual. Whereas for viviparous mother, less chances of death. Therefore, mature individuals are born directly. Let us look at the last one. Segmentation in the body is first observed in which of the following? Platy elements, there was no segmentation. Ascalmenthes, no segmentation. Analytes, segmentation was present. Arthropods, segmentation was again present. But where was it seen for the first time? It was in the analytes, like earthworms. Now let us look at the last question of this lesson. Match the following. So we have column 1 and column 2. So we have to match these, match with the correct pairs. Operculum. Where do we see operculum? Operculum is seen in oostic thighs. You remember oostic thighs are the bony fishes. We saw that the gills had a covering. Four pairs of gills are present with a covering and that covering is known as operculum. Parapodia. Parapodia helped in locomotion. Of which organism? Annelids. The earthworms. Scales, scales are present in fishes, okay, where else, other than that, it is also present in reptiles. Com plates, remember com plates, because of the presence of com plates, some organisms are known as com jellies, and who are known as com jellies? Tenophora. Radula, what is radula? Radula is a grasping organ which helps in capturing prey and it is present in the mollusks. 
hairs. Hairs on our skin, it is present in all of us. So it is something which is common to mammalia. Chronocytes or the collar cells. It is an, another name for collar cells. So where were the collar cells present? It was present in porifera. While we were discussing about the canal system, we were talking about the collar cells. Gill slits. Now the last option which is left is cyclostomata and chondrichthyes because they are because there we do not have proper developed gills with covering. So gill slits are present which actually help in respiration. So with this uh, we reach towards the end of this lesson and I helped that uh, this lesson would have helped you. So please go through the lesson for any detailed knowledge on any of the uh, terms which are not explained here. Please go through the lessons of class 9 and 10. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.